Yes. So if you're a drunkard in recovery, are you uh, like forever damned? Well, well, there's two types of people in the world, okay? There's those who are trusting in Jesus and those who are not, okay? okay. Now, the ones who trust in Christ, there's a work that's going on in their life where God is leading them to righteousness. Why? Because Jesus is righteous. You know, I don't know if you heard the gospel, Jesus never sinned. He wasn't like us. He wasn't a drunkard. He wasn't a sexually immoral. He wasn't a liar. Yeah, he was perfect in every he way. He was perfect right? in every way, exactly. Now, the scripture says that those who are righteous, they imitate Christ who is righteous. Now, there's a breakdown there, right? Because we got wickedness and drunk. You mentioned drunkenness. Yeah, so that's why. Is that a sin that you're struggling with? Well, I'm in recovery. Okay. No, 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 God can, but you know what, just because you're in recovery from alcohol doesn't mean you're saved, either. But the, the good news is, is that that's, that's a step towards God. When you laid down your alcoholism and you got sober, you took a step towards God. But, but, but the ultimate thing is you have to put your, your faith, your trust, your hope, your commitment to Jesus. When you do that, it's not just one area of your life that you commit to the Lord, but you say, God, have, have my whole life. I mean... You know, don't, you know, because here's the problem, you know, you might think that your main issue is drunkenness, yeah. but it's really not. The main issue is, Spiritual it's pride. There's, the devil, he fell by pride. He, he thought he was better than God. He knew more than God. Pride, pride is that thing that makes you feel self-sufficient. You can do what you want to do. And you might, you might realize that the, the, the alcohol was destroying your life, but there's other sins that can destroy you besides alcohol. Well, I'm seeing all those and I'm like, I've done all of them. So I'm just wondering, like, I don't, I don't want to burn in hell after I, after I die. That's right? a healthy fear of God. Yeah. And now, now, so what God wants here, this is for you. What God wants you to do, young man, what's your name? Uh, my name's Justin. Justin, I'm Adam. So God has two requirements for all of his creation. He created, he wrote this on your heart and my heart. It's two things. It says, repent and believe. What that means, Justin, is uh, when you believe, you believe like you just did, and you said, Jesus, he never sinned, okay? And not only that, you acknowledge that he was God in the flesh, because only God could never sin. He was perfect. And then when he died on the cross, he had to die for our sins. Not because he deserved to die. He was innocent. He was an innocent. He did it himself. Right. He, lay, he actually said that no one took his life, but he laid it down willingly, showing that he had power. He had, no, no enemy was going to defeat him. Now, of course, you know, the gospel, three days later, he was raised from the dead came back and now he lives a glorified body he, he ascended into heaven in a cloud and now he rules in the heavenly realm and he's with us right now through the holy spirit what that means is is that christ is amongst us god is everywhere okay and so god is reaching and calling to your heart that you would repent and put your faith in the gospel because there's nothing else to put your faith in if you don't turn to jesus you're going to turn to something on this earth and that'll be your god booze yeah that could be your that could be the thing you turn back to now i'm not trying to say that but i'm just trying to be real with you no, booze, because booze was my spiritual uh, uh replacement for a long time yeah. and then if you turn from booze and you don't turn give your life to christ something else becomes sexual morality is usually a big one uh, i used to smoke weed all the time you know and so there's yeah, a lot these are just questions i, I, I yeah. just don't know the answers to and like one more question i have sure 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 is jesus god he is god in the flesh the bible says it says, I've never it says, read the Bible, so I don't know. So yeah. I know if it says it in, like Father was done. I, I, well, there, there's three in one, okay? First um, John 5, 3 says that these three are one. It says the Father, the Spirit, and the Word. Okay, it, the Father, Father, God the Father, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, I mentioned that. And then the Word is Jesus. It actually says that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us with the held his glory. So these three are one. They're one in God. And uh, Jesus actually said, to, he said, before Abraham was, I am. What that means is, is he was God. I am means I live forever. I'm, I'm no beginning, no end. And okay, okay. I think you answered my question perfect. I'm will, you, will you see Jesus? I'll try. Do me a favor, Justin. Will you um, just go over here and talk to Mark real quick? Do you got a second? Yeah, here. Hey, Mark. This, this young man here has been really humble. I'll just ask you. Would would you would you can we pray for you and just just ask the Lord to bless you? I can give you prayer. Okay. 
Will you pray with me with him? Sure. Heavenly Father, I just thank Wish you for you Justin. Lord. I just ask you to reveal what only you can reveal and confirm what only you can confirm to him about what I'm speaking and assist your word, God. And give him a desire, hunger, and thirst for righteousness and, and that he would search these things out for himself and seek you, Father. And that he might know that he is saved so that he wouldn't go to hell, God. Hell is a terrible place. Heaven is where we want to go, God, and live forever. And I just pray a blessing over him in Jesus' name. Thank you for Justin's humility and his sincerity, asking good questions. He's thinking. Father, it's a good sign that you're, I, I love that and I praise you for that. I, I see that you're working in him. I just pray you save his soul completely and keep him away from alcohol and these things that he knows are a danger to him. I thank you for this work that you're doing already. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you very much. God bless you, man. Thank you. Love you, brother. Amen. So we're here to talk with you guys. We, we're here to... Is what we came because of forgiveness but people uh, who deny the word of God they they will have judgment on that day we're here because the Lord Jesus Christ he wants to be Lord of your life that he might govern your life and show you his marvelous loving kindness well I've been forgiven God's changed me I was a sinner I was a, a wicked man I come here today because I know that God wants to bless you Turn you away from your sin. Will you be turned away from your sin? The danger of sin. The destructive nature of sin. Well, I love the Bible. I'm a lover of God's Word. I, I praise God for the Word of God. The Bible says, it says, how can a young man cleanse his way by taking heed according to God's word? When you have God's word in your life, you can be cleansed. God's word can cleanse your heart, purify you. God wants to purify you. He wants to redeem you and refine you as silver is refined. God wants to bless you and change you and mold you into the image of his son. God wow. wants you to be a born-again Christian. God wants you to be a success. Not a bad example of somebody that denies the ways of the Lord. What are the ways of the Lord? The ways of the Lord are found through the Lord, through Jesus Christ. Amen? Jesus Christ is the way of life. The way of God was found through the Lord Jesus. You need Jesus Christ today to show you his ways. The Bible says, show me your way, O oh God. Teach me your paths. God wants to teach you, lead you to rivers of living water. Jesus Christ is the only way to be saved. So I want you to enter into heaven. I want you to be forgiven by the Lord. God bless you. There's a blessing today for you. If you would just open your heart. The Bible says, says we have done, we've done you no wrong. We have uh, not sought glory from man, but we want you to have the, the glory of God in your life. We want you to have God's power in your life, the power of God unto salvation. You know, strength is the Lord's. Honor and beauty and majesty come from Him. There's nothing, there's, there's, there's no one else but Him. Far be it from God to do wickedness and from the Almighty to commit iniquity. God only does marvelous things. You know, we want to see you make it. We want to see you blessed in the Lord. Do you understand how to get blessed and how to get forgiven? How to be changed and saved, spared. God wants to spare you. You know, death is a real thing. Destruction comes suddenly, sir. Judgment, you know, people put it off. People ignore it. I tell you, you got to open your heart today. Seek the Lord. This is it French? Jesus Christ wants to save your souls. Why he sent us here? Jesus said, you say four months and then comes the harvest, but lift up your eyes and look. The fields are white for harvest. They're white for harvest today. Your life is precious today. God wants to bring a harvest into your life. What's the harvest of God? It's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. These things are acceptable unto God and approved by men. God accepts righteousness, peace, and joy. God accepts faith, hope, and love. These things will remain. They will remain the work of God. They will remain the characters of God. For it says, it says that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against which there is no law. There's no law against the ways of God. There's only a blessing. 
But people don't deny the only way, don't deny the only life, the only hope of the nations, Christ. The Bible says in times past God spoke to the fathers by the prophets, but has in these last days spoken to us by the Son. He spoke to us from heaven. The Lord then shook the earth. He's going to speak again. He's going to destroy the earth with fire. A new heaven, a new earth. Are you ready for the fire? Fire God's word to come down and burn up the wicked, burn up the chaff. But the wheat are gathered into the barn. Will you be gathered into the barn of God? Will you be gathered into the wedding feast of God or will you be shut out? You know, as my Jesus said, the kingdom of God is like unto ten virgins. Five were wise and five were foolish. That's a foolish devil on your shirt, sir. You need to repent. What? Why have you denied the way that leads to life? See, the way that leads to life is the way of abundance in Christ. And there's a way that squelches your life. It takes the life of its owners, the Bible says. Sir, I want you to have the life. I want you to have it be a bubbling brook in your life. But you got to let the strongholds come down. you got to let that, the, the enemy's entrapments, the deceit, the devil who has gotten in. How has the devil gotten in? Do you, do you know, young man, how the devil sneaks in, deceives you into thinking that it's okay? It's just okay, but God is speaking something else to your conscience. He's telling you, no, don't be deceived, don't die. Why should you die, save God? God takes no pleasure in the death of him who dies, but you return and live, ma'am. you got to turn to the light, turn away from darkness. Have you, you're a Christian? Are you born again? It's the only way. The only way is to be found as, 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 as saved. You know, sir, I want you to be saved. Are you saved? Are you condemned? Jesus said, he said that the, the, the those who believe are not condemned. Praise the Lord. But whoever does not believe is condemned already. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light came into the world and the men loved darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. Folks, the darkness hates the light. But you know what? The good news is, is that God, he can translate you from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the Son of his love. That's why we are preaching to you today. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Have they all not heard? The Bible says, but they did not believe the gospel. But their sound is going out to all the earth and their words to the ends of the world. God is sending out the warning. God is sending out the call. Will you answer? Jesus said, many are called, but few are chosen. Few are chosen. Many people get the call, but they don't choose. Will you choose? Will you be found as an object of mercy? Somebody who is built up. Somebody who is established in the faith. The Bible says, as you have received the Lord Jesus Christ, so walk in Him. Established in the faith. Rooted. You need to be rooted. Right here, French. It's just French, man. French. It's a French track. Right here. Care for your soul, sir. I want you to be saved. Explain to you the truth. Jesus said in John 8, 31, He said, if you continue in my word, you'll be my disciple indeed. you know the truth, and the truth will make you free. That's how you get free is the truth. The truth God, God should have been invented. Convic c convicts you. When you hear the truth about who God is, and you realize that we have not been perfect, that we have blown it. You know, God, you know, He uses His Word to cut us like a knife, the Bible says. It's a two-edged sword to divide your soul from spirit, your bone from marrow, to discern the thoughts and the intents of your heart. God wants you to see the heart, that you might know the truth, that it might be illuminated through knowledge. See, the knowledge of God, when He speaks to you and He makes known His ways. See, God wants to make known His ways to you, that you might not be deceived, that you might not have an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. Look at this. Praise God for this woman. She cares for you as a mother does, her own children. So affectionately longing for you. We long for you, our brothers and sisters. Some of you are lost today. And you need to be found. God wants you to come back to the sheepfold. What sin is condemning you and keeping you from God? Are you from the U.S.? Yeah, I'm from the U.S. I travel a long ways. God sent me here. That's why what, sir? That's why what? Here. Huh? The Bible. It's a Bible verse, man. Read it. Read the Bible. We're preaching the Bible. You should believe the Bible too, man. Fuck you. Hey, why do you curse? Don't curse at God. He's only blessed you, sir. He wants you to come to heaven. We're not here to condemn you. We're not here to condemn you. We're here to see you saved. We're here because we want you to be saved. People are upset because of what the Bible says about these sins. Because, the, like I said, that sharp sword is piercing their heart. 
and their, their motives and their thoughts are being revealed because they understand that there is a payment for sin. Now, God paid for your sins through Jesus. You can have that payment. Your, your slate can be wiped clean. You can have a faith abundance. The work of God was sufficient. His grace is sufficient. His grace is sufficient for you. Now, we're here today because we know. I know something about you. I know that you know that you need God. And you need His mercy more than the air that you breathe. You need the blessing. You need encouragement. You need correction. Look, the Bible says it says, He who spares his rod hates his child. But whoever loves him will discipline him promptly. Some of you need a, a, a discipline. You need God to bring a, a chastisement on you, lest you be destroyed in your drug use. Some of you I know, man, you're loose cannons. Oh, no, no, listen. The Word of God brings correction. It brings instruction. The Bible says it says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction. You need instruction. Where are you going today? You just walking down the streets, aimless in the conduct? I got a purpose. I've got, I've got, I've got commandments that I'm living by. But you're not living by your sin, and that's going to end for you. What will be the end of your sin, huh? What about, what about God, who goes on forever? What about, what about the treasure? Hidden in the field. When you find that treasure, Jesus said, you go and sell what you have and you get the field. But you might have. But you might have an inheritance. I have an inheritance. I know where I'm going. I've been accepted. I've been sure I've brought back to the family, the fold. People, though, they're outside. People, though, they're knocking, trying to get in. They can't get in. The door's shut. So I'm here to open the door to you. I'm here that you might enter in, that you might find life. Because Jesus Christ will find you. And you got to not resist. Jesus said, I left the 99, I came after the one. Don't resist them. Don't resist the good shepherd who gave his life for the sheep. Jesus said, I'm the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers. And the sheep did not hear their voices. See, when you hear the voice of Jesus, when you answer the call of the Messiah, the King, the Christ, the one who gives life, the one who gave life, the firstborn from the dead, the ruler of the kings of the earth, he rules over the nations, over the prosperous. Oh, God wants to prosper you. God does not want you to eat the fruit of your sin, the fruit of your own ways. He wants to give you a blessing that you might have the gift. It's a free gift, praise God. I'm here preaching. I'm here preaching that you might receive the gift, that you might receive that which you do not deserve. We deserve hell. We deserve judgment. We deserve to be destroyed. We deserve to receive judgment. But the Christ, the Son of the living God, the mercy in a man, the grace he embodied and he gave us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, it says. That through these exceedingly great and precious promises, it says, we have escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. I have escaped the corruption of the internet. I used to be a porn watcher. I used to be a masturbator. I talk about these things because you guys are in danger and your families are in danger. You need to wake to righteousness and sin not. For some do not have the knowledge of God. I say this to your shame, Paul said. Hallelujah. Do you have the knowledge of God? Then you would not live in a debauchery. You would not live in iniquity. You would depart from evil and do good. God has commanded all men everywhere to repent, young man. God has commanded, it says. Oh, it says. Oh, it says, it says, the Lord knows those who are his. For every man that names the name Christ, depart from iniquity. Depart from iniquity. Folks, don't let iniquity be your ruin. Don't let your sin be your ruin. Let the power of God's word, let the love of the cross. You need the cross in your life. The cross where Jesus died. Where you look at the cross and say, oh, the penalty, the payment, the blood that was shed, the cross, the cries of God on the cross. Saying, Father, forgive them. No, they know not what they do. It is finished. It is finished, said the Lord. Do you believe it? Do you believe that the work was finished? Do you believe that your sin was nailed to the cross? Do you believe what the scripture says? It says, he who he made him who knew no sin. Sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God, ma'am. You need righteousness? Don't have lewdness. Don't have wickedness. The Bible says, says because they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. It said, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. Being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness. 
They're full of envy, murder, and strife. You're murdering your lungs. You're murdering your body, sir. Don't be filled with murder because of addiction. Be filled with life. Be filled with abundant life. Be filled with new life. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, it says, who has given us abundant life, it says, through the resurrection from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice. For a short time, if need be, you have been grieved by many various trials, that the testing of your faith be much more precious than gold that perishes may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. He's going to be revealed. Will you be revealed with Christ? Will you come back with him on the clouds? Will you be clothed in white garments, riding on white horses with the king to come back to rid the earth of the enemies of God? And will you be gnashing your teeth? You know, say, I'm not ready, God. You know, the Bible says in Revelation chapter 6, it says, behold, it says they will see Jesus and they will cry out and call to the mountains and say, fall on us. Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. You know, when Jesus died on the cross, he gave his life as an innocent lamb. But guess when he comes back? He's not coming back to die for sins. He's coming back with wrath. He's coming back to execute the fierceness of the wrath and the wine press of Almighty God, the Bible says. But that's a fearful thing, the Bible says, to fall into the hands of the living God. How are you gonna how are you gonna withstand? How are you gonna withstand the living God? His fury is anger. That's why you gotta be right with Christ. That's why you gotta be found a child of God, seeking God, an open heart to God, having ears to hear. Because the Bible says it says these people they don't have they have ears, they don't hear. They have eyes they don't see. They have a heart that is hardened, they don't understand. But God can change your heart, lest they would see with their eyes, hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts that they would turn here. I'm calling out to you today to understand this. Understand the gospel. Understand the call in these last days. Rise up, O oh people. Rise up, O oh families of the nations. Rise up, grandparents. Rise up, grandma, grandfather. Rise up, sisters. Rise up, aunts and uncles and brothers. Because God wants you to be a part of the harvest. Don't be a part of the problem. No, we fear. Don't be a great brand fear. What is it? Fear is a very bad brand. Bad word, no. Bad brand. Fear God is what you need. Fear is Fear him who can destroy brand. your soul and body in hell. Oh, why would you deny the Bible, ma'am? Who taught you that? Not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit didn't teach you not to fear God. You don't fear man. That's the problem I'm calling you. Don't fear man. Don't fear the one who can kill the body, Jesus said, and cannot kill the soul. Fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Now you should fear God. Why? Because his final judgment, his final decision, when you die or when he returns, it cannot be reversed. It cannot be annulled. God, when he sets his heart on it, the Bible says in the book of Job, chapter 34, verse 14, it says, if God were to set his heart on it, if the Lord were to call together his breath and his spirit, all flesh would perish together and man would return to the dust. Man would return to the dust. If God said, I want my spirit back, I want my breath back, we would all fall dead. We would all die. Praise God though. Praise God that he's not doing that. Praise God that he's given us time to seek his face. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 12, it says, remember your creator. Before the silver cord is loosed, before the golden bowl is broken, before the pitcher is shattered at the fountain, and the wheel is broken at the well, and the dust returns to the dust as it was, the earth as it was, and the spirit returns to God who gave it. Remember your creator. Remember the life of your creator. Remember the commandment of God. Don't be a forgetful hearer of the word. Treasure the commandment. My son, it says, do not forget my law. But let your heart keep my commands, it says. It says, for length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. It says, bind mercy. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and men. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your nay ways acknowledge him. He will direct your paths. 
honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of your increase, so that your barns may be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Oh, it says, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor detest his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens, just as the Father, the Son, in whom he delights. Happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. For her proceeds are better than the profits of silver and her gain than fine gold. So she is more precious than rubies and all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. Her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her and happy are all who retain her. The Lord by wisdom founded the earth and by, by his understanding he said he established the heavens. By knowledge, the depths were broken up and the clouds dropped down the dew. My son, let them not depart from your eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. Oh, keep them. It says, then you will walk safely in your way and your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. Yes, you will lie down and your sleep will be sweet. Do not be afraid of sudden terror, nor of trouble from the wicked. For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. That's a promise from God. Proverbs 3 verse 26. The Lord will be your confidence. The Lord Jesus Christ will be with you. The Lord will keep you from being caught. Why do you deny him? Why do you deny the only one who can keep you protected? The Bible says in Psalms 34 verse 7, it says the angel of the Lord, the angel of Jesus Christ who is Lord, encamps around those that fear him to deliver them. You need to be delivered from your enemy, the devil. The Bible says, it says, the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that your sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Look, I have to deny myself. I'm a Christian. I'm a man who loves God. I don't want to be a lover of pleasure rather than a lover of God. See, which are you today? Do you love pleasure or you love God? Do you trust God when he said to lay down your, your ways and deny yourself and carry your cross? Or do you say, God, it's too hard. I can't do it. It's impossible. Or do you say, God, it might be impossible with man, but with God, all things are possible. You can overcome with the power of the word of God. You can overcome with the Holy Spirit of God. You can triumph over the enemy of your soul, the devil, who's deceiving you guys to look at porn and smoke weed and, and be filled with the demons of this evil world. All this stuff that's going on in this evil world, dragging people away from the, the word of God and the, and the love of God. Instead, they turn to the love of sex, the love of education, the love of their careers, the love of the praise of men. I say, don't love the praise of men, love the praise of God. Love the words of Jesus. Look, Jesus said, Jesus said, you know, he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all the things will be added unto you. All the things can be added unto you today. Everything that you need to be successful is in Christ. It's in Jesus Christ. Are you a success? Are you? Are you headed to the celestial city called heaven? Are you a, a, a you know you know a friend of God? Did you know that you can we can be friends with God? That's amazing. The Bible Jesus said, He said, No longer do I call you a servant, but I call you my friends. Because whatever my father has told me, I have commanded you. And guess what? You listen. That's how you become a friend of Jesus. You know, you know, you know what the father said to the son? Yeah, he spoke from heaven, ma'am. And he said, this is my beloved son. Hear him. Hear him. You don't hear Jesus. If you don't hear Jesus, guess what? God's not going to hear you. God's not going to hear you. Because the Bible says, I called to you and you refused. I stretched out my hand and you did not regard. But if you answer the call of the Holy Spirit, if you listen attentively with the broken and contrite spirit, and you say, God, I'm undone. Teach me, God. Make your ways known unto me. God, give me the instruction. Give me that which I don't know. Because the Holy Spirit reveals knowledge. He reveals mysteries. Will you have the, 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 the hidden wisdom which is kept secret from the beginning of, the, of this world revealed to you? The treasures hidden in Christ? All the treasures of wisdom and knowledge? All the things of God's nature, His divine nature, all the things that God decrees, the everlasting power of love, the everlasting power of truth, the everlasting word of God, that which brings alive from the dead. You need, oh man, 
No, no, this word is eternal, the words of Christ. But your life is not eternal. Look at the mocking. Look, fools make a mock of sin, the Bible says. They make a mock in their sin. Amen. Don't mock Amen. at this word. Amen. Don't be found. The Bible says, do not add to God's word lest he rebuke you and you be found a liar. Don't be, don't be a mocker. Lest your bonds be strengthened, Isaiah said. For I have heard of a destruction decreed from God. Oh yeah, mockers, people, they scoff and they mock at God. The Bible says, proud and arrogant man. Mocker is his name. He, he acts with arrogant pride. He acts with arrogant pride. What are these festivals called? What are these parades called? Pride, they call them. Pride. That's a bad thing in the sight of God. A haughty look and a proud heart. And the plowing of the wicked is sin, the Bible says. Guys, the Bible says, oh, quit plowing wickedness. You're going to reap the whirlwind. you got to break up your fallow ground. Stop plowing. Stop plowing all the devilish things out of your life. Start sowing for yourselves righteousness and reaping mercy. You need to sow for yourselves righteousness. Here, Rich, if you care about your soul, then take this track. Fancy right here.